Hello, this little video is going to show you how to find equivalent fractions. Finding equivalent fractions is a very important skill for adding and subtracting them and comparing them and ordering them. So this is the first one in that sort of stepping stone, if you like, to being able to work with fractions in different ways. Now you can see on here that I've got six tenths is equal to three fifths is equal to nine fifteenths is equal to fifteen. 25 and that's because equivalent means they are the same they have the same proportion so you might be asked to cancel it to its lowest form well guess what fractions they're just times tables in disguise let's have a look what's going on here um, if I take this one is the one in its simplest form hopefully you've already spotted that if I do the three times table now remember from the other video that whatever you do to the top, you have to be able to do to the bottom. So if I have three times three, I'll get nine. But if I multiply the numerator, the top by three, I have to multiply the denominator by three. So three threes are nine, five threes are 15. What did I multiply three fifths by to get 15 out of 25? Well. 3 goes into 15 five times, and 5 fives are 25. Double it, 3 twos are 6, 5 twos are 10. So equivalent fractions, actually, they are just about using times tables. Let's have a look at finding another one. If I have a fraction like 4 fifths, and I need to find an equivalent fraction to it, I have to choose something to multiply the top and the bottom by. So I'm going to choose seven. Well, if I multiply the numerator by seven, I have to multiply the denominator by seven. So four fifths is equal to 28 30 fifths. So 28 over 35. If I was just given 28 over 35 and I didn't have four fifths, and I needed to know what it was in its simplest form, I have to find something in the times table. I have to find a common, that means it's in both the top and the bottom, factor, a number that shares into them without leaving a remainder. Well, I can't divide the top and bottom by two, but I do know my seven times tables. So sevens into 28 goes four, and 35 divided by seven is five. So 28 over 35 in its simplest form is four fifths. Let's have a look at another one and hopefully you've got some scrap paper because you're going to try some in a minute. But here's two thirds and I want some equivalent fractions to two thirds. Well, if I'm given a specific denominator, it might be you get a question like this and they've made the denominator 18. Well, to know what goes on top, I have to know how many threes go into 18, hence my times tables. Well, three times six. So 18 divided by three is six. If I've multiplied the denominator by six, I have to do that to the numerator. So two thirds becomes 12 over 18. I'll do another one. What about if I had the fraction four fifths and they gave you a question that they wanted you to find the bottom. They wanted you to find the denominator. Well, you have to look at the numerator. Let's say that on the top it was 28. Okay, oh, we've looked at that one. That's boring, you already know that's seven. So I'm going to do something different. Let's have 36, okay. Well, I have to know how many fours go into 36. Well, four times nine. If I multiply the numerator by nine, I had to do that to the denominator and five nines are 45. And likewise, if I wanted to divide, if I needed to find it in its simplest form, I simply go backwards. What's the common factor of 36 and 45? Well, two doesn't go into them. Three does, 
and I'll, I'll show you some stepping stones if you like. You might just recognise that three goes into the top and bottom, into the numerator and denominator. So if I start out with 36 over 45, and I divide by three, well, threes into 36 go 12, threes into 45 go 15. You should sort of have a sense that actually that's not in its simplest form yet. What else goes into 12 and 15? Um, three. So th 12 divided by three is four. 15 divided by three is five. Now four and five, five's a prime number, and I know that there aren't any common factors except for one, which wouldn't help me because if I divide the top and bottom by one, I get back to four fifths. So I've gone as far as I can go. I did that in two steps. I divided by three, and then I divided by three. Again, a oh, bit of a mess there. I could have done, if I if I was really good at my times tables, I could have just gone straight for dividing by nine and said that 36 divided by nine is four, 45 divided by nine is five. So that's how you find an equivalent fraction. You use your times tables. I'm going to do one more example and then you're going to have a go at a couple. So let's have a look at this. Um, seven elevenths. Well, I want to find the equivalent fraction and this time I haven't been given a specific numerator or denominator, I'm just going to choose a random times table like eight. Well, seven eighths are 56, 11 eighths are 88. So seven elevenths is equal to 56 over 88. If I was given a specific numerator or denominator for this, so I've got seven eleven, if I said, right, they need you to find the numerator, if the denominator is 99, well, how many 11s go into 99? Good, hopefully you said nine. If I multiply the denominator by nine, I have to multiply the numerator by nine. Seven nines are 63. Don't be under the impression that fractions can always be halved. It's what often happens, you'll get a fraction like, 12 eighteenths, for example, people go, oh, you can halve it. Yes, you can, six over nine. Oh, you can't halve anymore, so I'm going to stop. Well, you have to look again, does anything else go into the numerator and denominator? And in this case, yes, I can divide by three. So if you're doing it in stepping stones, make sure you go as low as you can. Right, time for you to have a go at some. Here's some fractions, and I want you to find the equivalent uh, fraction if we have three fifths with a numerator of 12. What's the denominator? Another one might be four sevenths when the denominator is 42. That's number one. Number two. And number three, one third, if the denominator is 24, and number four, what is this fraction? Um, let's have four tenths when the denominator is 60. So pause the video and find the missing numerators and denominator. Okay, so you've had to go at your times tables because that's really all fractions are. So let's get having a look at this. Now, if I have three fifths, I know that three goes into 12 four times. So I've got to multiply the top and the bottom by four. Five fours are Oh dear, my pen's run out. That's no good, I'll have to buy some more. Sorry about that. So 12 out of 20. I really hope you were correct. And let's have a look at the second one. Sevens into 42 go six, and four times six is 24. So 24 out of 42, and I like that, especially if you got it right. Well, threes into 24 go eight, 
If I multiply the bottom by 8, I must do that to the top. 8 out of 24. And the last one, well, 10s into 60 go 6, so 4 times 6 is, again, 24. So, hopefully, you got yourself 4 ticks. And now, before you go and have a cup of tea, I'm just going to give you some to cancel down to their simplest forms. So here we go, this time for number one, cancel down 9 fifteenths to its simplest form. Fourteen out of twenty-eight to its simplest form. Nasty one. And finally number four, have a go at cancelling down the fraction um, eighteen out of forty-eight. Remember it doesn't matter how many stepping stones you take, you might dive straight in because you know your times tables. You might have to do it in three or four jumps, won't matter. Pause the video and have a go. Cancelling down to their simplest form. Okay, so you've had a go at cancelling these down. You've used your times tables, hopefully. Now, 9 and 15, I'm looking for a common factor, something that goes into 9 and into 15. Well, into 9 and 15, it's the 3 times table. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5. Hopefully you got that right. And you can double check, look, 3 3s are 9, 5 3s are 15. This one, hmm. Now, I'm lucky here because this one's quite small, so I know 2 and 7. Well, 2 is going to give me 7 over 14, and again, you can do it in one jump or two jumps, but if I divide by 7, I'll get 2. If I divide by 7 here, I'll get 4. Hmm. Okay, I should hope that you've seen straight away that I can actually cancel again by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 4 divided by 2 is a half. If you know your 14 times table, of course, you'll spot that straight away. This one, a little bit trickier. Nobody likes the 6 times tables, the 7 times tables, the 8 times tables, but this one is the 7. The 7s go into 42 6 times, and 7 goes into 56 8 times. Oh, OK. Um, I can halve these. I, I know that 2 goes into both of these as well. So I'm going to halve it. I'm going to go 6 divided by 2 is 3. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Can't go any lower, so actually I hope you went down as far as 3 quarters. Notice I did it in two jumps. That's absolutely fine. What goes into 18 and 48? Well, 6 for a start. Well, 6 is into 18, go 3. 6 is into 48. 6 eighths of 48, can't go any lower, that's it. So hopefully you got those right. I really hope that helped. Um, press subscribe because the next few videos are coming out. There'll be a whole series on fractions leading right up to algebraic fractions, um, but stepping stones. So if you watch each video in the, in the correct sequence, you'll, you'll be able to handle them at, at, all the way up to level eight and nine. Okay, thank you. I hope that helped. Bye bye.